Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome to episode 79, the official start of season four of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. This is March 15th, 2021. I'm Jordan, and I am joined, as always, by my cultivated co-hosts, Amy and Bill. How are you guys doing today? Uh, a little on the nose right there. Oh, I've got my Way big on gloves on. I, I decide I was going to go with uh, something like scheming or plotting. And then I said, no, it's, I, why? I've never been as less subtle than a hammer. Why start now? Um, I'm uh, So anyway, yes, uh, this is backwards from normal. Uh, I'm doing this, not Bill, because uh, this is my idea. This is the season of Jordan. So uh, get used to whoa, this. Whoa, 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 whoa. But we didn't no. discuss this. Oh, we didn't? Okay, never... Okay, uh, season of Jordan on hold. I have not signed off on this. Thus <laughs> begins the thousand-year reign. Um, anyway, uh, as a reminder, oh, this is not a spoiler-free uh, podcast at all, even even remotely close to one. Particularly tonight. Yes, because we're going to yes. be talking about cultivation and her plan that has clearly been spanning millennia. So uh, I, ho- I hope you, if anyone comes here is like, well, I can't believe that. No, just... You know, abandon hope, all ye who are spoiled here. All right. Uh, as always, we are uh, we're very grateful to our patrons who help support and make this possible over on Patreon, uh, Cosmere Studies. Uh, we have a new patron to thank. We have to thank Karen C. So thanks, thank Karen, you. for the thank uh, you much the wonderful wonderful stuff. So how are you guys doing today? I'm doing um, okay. Yeah, I've been busy with medical tests and stuff. Nothing nothing to be worried about, just standard, you know, out-of-the-box medical procedures. Don't I worry signed about my it. name a lot because I refinanced my house, Ooh. but otherwise, yay. Yeah, if you weren't here for the pre-show, she got a snazzy 2.5%. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this is the fun. Like, this is what you have to look forward to if you're not an adult yet. <laughs> This, these are the things we get excited for. We're like, mm, oh yeah, 2.5%. Now, you know, and I'm now a- we're going to find have these super sleuths who've, who like look and <laughs> they're able to find exactly where Amy lives because you said no. that. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think that's possible at the same time. I've been please surprised. Don't, I guess. If you can, just please don't. If you can find someone else, it'll be cooler. Um, anyway, <laughs> so today's topic um, this was one that I really pushed for, hence why Bill said, do you just want to do this? Um, just then I said, yes. Um, cultivation's plan. So Cultivation, uh, as we now know, she has touched directly uh, at least three individuals. Um, the three that we know that she has directly had contact with was uh, Dalinar was the first one we know, then Teravangian, then Lyft. Um, mm mm-hmm. And all of them thought they went to the Night Watcher and, until certain details went into place. And yeah. And it's ended with, uh, again, spoiler alert, Taravanchian becoming Odium. <laughs> so we, obviously we as readers, were absolutely horrified <laughs> when, uh, when that shoe dropped. Um, but yeah. col- clearly this was Cultivation's plan all along. Uh, so... I decided to go back and figure out how did we get here. Okay, before we dive into that, can we talk a a little bit about just what exactly we do know about cultivation? We know she was a Dagron. Dragon. So her name is Coravelli Mavast, and that was figured out by some Cosmere scholars who are much smarter than I am. (laughs) Um, So in uh, Rhythm of War, there's an image that shows three different glyphs that when you combine them together form the glyph for Roshar. And the second one talks about how it's, um, the name is based on clearly referencing Coravelli Mavast is what the, the artist or scholar, whoever it is that created this image said. And so 
we know and that's so that's how we found out um cultivation's name um is they found it and then brought it to brandon they said hey is this referring to cultivation and you know he got that smug you know smirk and he's just like well yes yes it is yes. The fact um, that they hide not... details like that, is, like that they can oh, hide details it. like that. It's That's insane. The amount of planning it takes for something like that is actually pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot well, of and coordination. That, and that's why Brandon has a team like he does. Yeah. You know, and he, he, he'll he be one of the first to say who that, you know, without this team, we wouldn't be getting the books that we are. Because he wouldn't be able to focus on writing them as much and, and just... Yeah. Ah. So special thanks to Team Dragonsteel for just being awesome. Go mm-hmm. Dragonsteel. Anyway. Dragonsteel. Um, we also know that she is uh she was romantically involved with Tanavast, aka Honor. Mm-hmm. And I still don't know and I still he was claim that, a dragon, right? Well, I, I do think that he took her name though, because when it when That's you marry a dragon, you take her name. <laughs> <laughs> Tradition be darned. Either that or that's just a dragon thing and he was already a dragon yeah but i like my version better so i'm really rooting for it (laughs) um but yeah but yeah so the whole idea behind this was i wanted to see all the dominoes when taravangian finally meets cultivation again for the first time uh, after ascending and he starts to realize how unreliable um the future site he has is he is he, he's blown away. And this is a guy who, you know, just killed a vessel, uh, has done some pretty impressive uh, future sight himself. And Indeed. he looks at it and he's just like, how did you even dare to try this? <laughs> this is th- like he and Insane. then he just started slow clapping, which was awkward because there's only two of them. So, <laughs> well, and, and race referred to her um, future sight at one point, didn't he? Uh, that Am I, I remembering remember. that right? Somebody I mentioned remember. I was never as good at it as cultivation. Oh, honor did. That was like honor that. who said that honor through did. the Okay, visions. it was honor. That's right. I, okay. I remembered it was some big guy, and and Michael Kramer was using his deep voice. Yeah. So, <laughs> which, given how many big heavy things there are, Michael Kramer has had good reason to use his deep voice for a lot of mm-hmm. characters. <laughs> um, Odium, Honor, Stormfather, Dalinar, Rock. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, so I thought we'd go down and I want to see what cultivation she touched three people and the effect those dominoes have. Um, mm-hmm. I'm also going to be posting the list that I, I'm making here. I'm going to be posting it on Reddit. If you're watching us live, it'll be up on Wednesday morning, uh, basically right when the episode goes up. If you're listening to this, you know, through the podcast, guess what? It's already up there. Um, I'm bound to have forgotten things or, uh, there's certain ones I'm more sure about that she was trying to influence directly other ones. I'm not. And so mm-hmm. I kind of would like to see a discussion about this and find what else I'm missing. here. Um, so I thought we'd start with the easiest person lift because as much as lift has influenced things, she hasn't influenced things nearly as much as Dalinar and Taravangian have. She just At least not have directly. The in- yeah. She not- just doesn't have the influence they do. Exactly. Yet. Um, right. Get ready Yet. for for God Emperor <laughs> lift. Anyway, um, yeah. So first of all, she <laughs> when she went to the to originally the Night Watcher, I think, but we don't know the details yet. We do know cultivation was involved, though. She gave her mm-hmm. the ability to convert the what she eats from mass directly to life light, and extended her partially into the cognitive realm, which lets her touch mm-hmm. spread, which is Crazy. bizarre. Now that's just a theory from Wendell, but uh, but at this but, point, I think I think it's fairly confirmed because yeah, well, particularly with her showing up in the visions from Dalinar as well. Yeah, well, and mm-hmm. being able or to see Dalinar's visions, being able to Dalinar. see the after image on Zeth and stuff like that as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So she's she's an interesting person. She's she's living in one and a half D apparently. Oh um, uh, yes, the mouse trails on Zeth. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first thing she does that we see of import is she saves Yonagon or Gox from Nail, which leads to him becoming Prime Aka Six, uh, which is pretty cool. If those, if you don't rem- uh, remember, the reason they were willing to make a child emperor was because uh, 
Seth was going around murdering folk, and they didn't want, no one wanted to be emperor. <laughs> yeah, they'd lost like a couple of them, and he did die, but then he came back. So yay, yeah. he totally, yeah, that's the best resume we can get right there. The churn rate was too high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just, look, some positions, they're, they're just, they're <laughs> awful, and you just got to keep training new ones. Mm -hmm. um then uh we this leads into uh edge dancer which is a fun little read um and over the course of that she she saves uh the stump from nail as well lift is mm -hmm. a, a reoccurring thorn in Nail's side it turns out <laughs> well to be fair he picked the fight first yeah it, it was him he followed her um yeah. but so in doing that in saving stump from nail that leads to a couple things one Lyft uh, hugs him to death and gets him to finally realize that the desolations have returned. He finally admits it. And then he goes and talks to Ashar. It, it, it was a little bit more than the hug. It was the fact that she swore an oath right in front of him. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm going to think it's like, look, Lyft just gives really good hugs, okay? I bet she I, does. I, she I would not argue with, her, with you on that. <laughs> just quality she hugs. She probably gives awesome hugs. World-changing world hugs. Um, yeah. the other thing that that led to was she saved Stump and Stump ends up, uh, joining Adolin and Shallan on their quest to, uh, mm -hmm. to go get the Windrunners, uh, helping everyone. So as the resident truth watcher. Yeah. The mm -hmm. as far as we can tell, the only regular truth watcher so far. Yeah. The, o the sure only they're... one, no, the only one that, the only one that's a major character. Yeah. That's yeah I, mean. I think there are others that are. Yeah. There's general, definitely others. don't see them. The, Yes, yeah. it's just literally every other truth watcher we see is has got corrupted, corrupted spren. So mm -hmm. or awakened mm -hmm. spren. Sorry, I don't want to yes. piss off Ja and not. Um, yeah. The other thing she does, and I don't know if this has really had any impact or will have any impact, but because she went there, she also met Ark Arklo the Sleepless on on mm -hmm. his on the mission. So that might have consequences mm -hmm. as of yet. Um, no, the Sleepless aren't important. Probably not. Um, nah. Nothing big there. They but, don't do anything. But Arklo, it, we, it might have less of an impact because Arklo is already apart from the other Sleepless. Like uh, we see mm -hmm. in Dawn Shard that they've sort of cut him off because they're just like, no, nah, he's weird. And he's he's I mean, it, talking to Radiance. That's dangerous. It's less of a direct inf influence, but, you know, he, he seems to be a major player. So I don't know yeah. that it's less of an influence, actually. Yeah, it's just, but just so far, we haven't seen anything. We haven't seen any fruit mm -hmm. from that. Um, right. The next big thing that she does is uh, she sneaks into Dalinar's visions originally when she's trying. he's trying to talk to Gox. And first time, she just sort of like, K-A-T, we're out of here. And the Stormfather's all pissed off. And he's what? like, what? what? <laughs> she, sh she can't do that. She shouldn't be here. She should have been able to pull him out. What? <laughs> This is, it doesn't work that way. And he was not happy. He was very displeased. <laughs> but the second time she sneaks in, she sneaks in and she sees a very important meeting because she sees Odium mm. talking to Dalinar, which oh, yeah. causes her to take things a little more seriously. And she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Gox. <laughs> we'll, right. we'll make this happen. Yeah, because that's a problem. Um, which that uh, leads to making the whole coalition at your your Ethiru much more likely, because mm -hmm. they're bringing the Asish to the table, which is a really big deal. Really brings, big coalition brings right there. most everybody yeah. else who's a player in. Yeah. And so without her, maybe that doesn't happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, she she participated in a certain a certain battle at Thalen Field that was a little important. She did a few mm -hmm. things there. One, uh, she saved Zeth from being eaten by Nightblood. Right. Which that sort of was important. She's the one who came up with the idea to use light weaving to steal the perfect gem heart back. Because she had to go up to Shalon and be like, could you stop hugging yourself? <laughs> I need, I, I need you to do something. Uh, she's also the one who delivers the perfect gem heart to Dalinar. If you'll recall, he was in the middle of the thrill at the time, and Seth was like, nope, ain't stepping inside that thing. Can't go in there. But it's what, is, for me. what does Lyft do? She's always where she's not supposed to be. Yep. And so she, she was able to do that when she probably wouldn't have been able to without being touched by, uh, 
by cultivation. Uh, that helps them uh, capture the thrill, kind of important. Mm -hmm. um, it Then, her odd abilities also allow her to be conscious during the occupation of Urethiru, uh, which leads yep. to her getting right. captured by Marais, which means she gets delivered to Raboniel as a present, and this was done in front of one Venli. Mm -hmm. And this, now she has a chicken. And now, yeah. She well, does. but the thing is, Ven, this, <laughs> if it weren't for Lift being there, Venli might not have realized that she couldn't, why she couldn't swear the second ideal yet. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that was important. She's the guilt trip. This also put Relaine at, in place because of, because that ends up being an inner, he, Relaine gets pulled out because of Venli. And mm -hmm. it puts him in a position to act as sort of a mediary between the humans and the singers right when the tensions were at their highest in the middle of Urethiru. Um, mm -hmm. And this also, and this one's, I think, a bit of a stretch, but still, I think, worthy to be talked about. This also puts Venli in a position to return to her people with Leshwi, uh, right. returning to the to the listeners, and to show mm -hmm. them, you know, all, and basically give them all the knowledge they had, and yeah. where she also learns about the Chasm Fiend that's just sort of chilling with them that we somehow forgot to talk about during our Venli episode. I had forgotten about that entirely. There was so much. Indeed, <laughs> it was one of that. There was so yeah. There's so much. I re-listened to the ending I had of the book. Forgotten about and that, that happened. I'm like. I forgot about that. Oh, crap. We didn't talk about that. In the we episode. forgot about a chasm fiend. That's just how big the book is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so big that it could obscure a chasm fiend. <laughs> but yeah, but then the other thing, the other two things, one, uh, he are, uh, Bill already talked about it. She may have bonded into AVR, so we don't know what that's going to do. Yes. But most of Did she? Yeah, we don't know that she bonded it. Yeah. But she at I least mean, at has this point, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she ends up bonding it because, mm -hmm. which I hadn't thought, holy cow. Wow. Yeah. Brandon. That, <laughs> that could have, that could have consequences. But the other That's thing, gonna be fun. she's the one who found Kaladin's flute in that salvage, which leads Kaladin not, to. Fuck. Not Kaladin's flute. Well, but it was, it was Kaladin's at that point. Wait, gave it to him. It was a present. But he wants it back. Eventually. Uh, but that leads Kaladin <laughs> to going to find where she got that salvage, and which leads Kaladin to finding a certain horse carved by his little brother. Oh. So all that is stuff that Lyft has done that has had an effect on, you know, the story going forward. That's just mm -hmm. one person that Cultivation touched. Now, so, some of these, it might be a stretch. Maybe Lyft could have done some of this without Cultivation. Or maybe some of these things might have happened without Lyft's involvement. Or but, somebody else would have stepped in. And yeah, or some, we don't, but we don't know. these are the ones that we know. Let's talk about one where it's a little more direct and maybe a little more important. <laughs> Dalinar Colin. Mm. And just the effects of visiting her. Uh, those who don't remember exactly what she took, she took his memories of Evie. And, mm. and, and it seems like some of the stuff surrounding her, because like all the... He stopped hearing children screaming as well. Um, so he seems to have forgotten a lot of the stuff at that moment of the full details of what he did at uh, the mm -hmm. what's that place called? The I keep saying breach, but that's oh, not it. The rift. It's, not, it's the, the rift. rift. That's what it is. Yeah. The breach. That that's a that's Pacific, that's a Pacific Rim. That's, Rim. A, that's a different <laughs> yeah. thing. Um, that said, Dalinar Kalin piloting a, a Jaeger. Ooh, I'll, my I'll, goodness. I, I'd ship it anyway. Um <laughs> So Isn't you, that basically <laughs> just a giant shard plate? Yes. Uh -huh. But you need two people to pilot it. So, Well, him and anyway. Navani, let's do this. <laughs> him and the Stormfather. <laughs> We've got these things. This is, our story is going to be great. Anyway. Um, Navani gets her own Jaeger. So oh, because yeah. of all this, uh, Dalinar starts to, fall, oh, like immediately after he leaves the forest and he's like, what a, why did I go talk to a forest friend? That's, that was dumb of me because he can't remember what he did. Um, mm -hmm. And he immediately starts to follow the codes because those were the last words his brother gave him. And he realized not following them is partially what led to his brother's death. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that gets him to follow the codes, which makes him a much better man than the one we saw. Uh, Cause yeah. o the old version of him likely would have let Sadius uh, sort of take the reins and guiding Elokar. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And Sadius being a, 
Honor old cuss who is very cynical, that would not be go well for Elokar. Well, not only that, he didn't just take the memories. He took them for a while and yes. introduced the or she. She took them for a while and then reintroduced them at a time when it would matter and when he was would be able to handle them in it as a different yeah. person. He could process them better, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and so and this is kind of important because And and as, returned them gradually as well. Yeah. Mm. Um cuz as he's try cuz he starts trying to lead Elokar down the correct path. Um mm-hmm. not not an, exactly an easy thing when Elokar's got all his baggage, Dalinar has all his baggage. Mm-hmm. And both of them are living in the shadow of Gavilar. And so yeah. But at the same time, this definitely improved his relationship with his sons, especially Renarin. Um, oh, poor Renarin. W- with his sons and with Yasna. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, his relationship with Yasna seemed okay before that. No, sorry. Uh, sorry. The the death of Gavilar improved his relationship yeah. with Yasna is more what I've meant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, but it seems to me like this, like being clear of all this guilt, I think improved his relationship with uh, his sons. Mm hmm. Uh, while he, while he thought, you know, what happened happened. Um, cause we do see that it ends up hurting his relationship with Adolin, uh, going down the line, Yeah, but he right. starts to be a better man and it definitely improves his relationship with the sons. And that's important because Renarin, we don't exactly know. We still don't know how he bonded Gliss, but there's mm-hmm. a decent chance that Renarin might not have been in a mental state to bond Gliss without this. Now we That's we have, true. we don't know, but that of of literally everything might be the most important thing because Renar and bonding Gliss is what makes him the blind spot for Odium. Yeah, and right. that's what leads to everything else. It does. It's crazy. We he needs he needs that that blind spot. Now we don't know. We might find out in a future book. No, this would have happened either way, but it's at least possible at the mm-hmm. moment. That's true. Um, this also put him, because he's starting to improve, uh, it puts him at odds with Sadius and the High Princes. And so... Because mm-hmm, he's that, trying to enforce the codes. Yeah. And so that's gonna... That leads to him having issues with the other High Princes, but that also leads to some of the High Princes actually stepping up and becoming better men. Uh, mm-hmm. well, I'm trying to remember all the names of the other ones that showed up other than... Uh, I'm, I'm forgetting all their names now that I think about it. Oh, goodness. Yeah, because we don't interact with a bunch of them in Rhythm of War. Who's the one that's married to Polona? I remember Polona's name, but they're not married. <laughs> ah, Sabario. Sabario, thank you. Sabario yes. being the biggest one. Um, I'm going to look up the High Princess. Yeah, there, it's, it was Sabario. There was one that died, and then there's the one that Dalinar... That was Royon, I believe. Yeah. Royon, that sounds right. So there's Aladar, Bethab... Hatham. Aladar is the one that came with them, isn't yeah. it? Okay. Al- Aladar is the one yeah. who was basically like, I-, I don't do what Sadius says. He's like, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. yeah. And he ends up sort of becoming Dalinar's about- right hand as far as yeah. Alethkar stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to. But so that that's kind of important. Um, it also make you know, a little important, makes him worthy of the bond between himself and the Storm's father. So he starts to see mm-hmm. the visions. Right. Uh, you know that had a few effects. Um, oh, just just a few. And so this re- improves his relationship with Adolin, which helps him start to lead Adolin down, you know, the path of being. Even though Adolin is a fop, you know, but being <laughs> well, yeah, but a that's really the thing is, soldier. and that's the thing is, he becomes somebody that Adolin, Adolin can really admire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's important because Adolin is someone who cares about other people's opinions on some level. Mm -hmm. And so had he not helped Adolin be more self-assured. Particularly in uh, the way of kings. Yeah. Yeah. Adolin could have been influenced to be someone who's more like the other high princes. Mm -hmm. And instead, he's a very good man. Right. Yeah. And honestly, he at, at first he was leaning towards being more like Sadius, even though. You know, he the, he was angry at Sadius for the th- ways that he the ways that Sadius was treating his father. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he was but Adolin was leaning to being a man more like Sadius anyway. Because that was that was the the role models and the kind of 
mm-hmm. high prince yeah. behavior. Well, it's all his insane. peers on top of it all. They all think his, mm-hmm. his father's insane. Is uh, is uptight for you know doing these codes and all these other yeah. things and right. Well, and and so game. and just a small example, Adolin showing that he would defend. Uh, I think it was a courtesan somewhere in Sadius's yeah, cap that made an impression mm-hmm. on Kaladin and made him yep. realize mm-hmm. Dalinar's men are slightly different. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, this also <laughs> makes uh, Dalinar someone who's who would give away a shard blade to save a bridge crew, and mm-hmm. in particular, Kaladin Stormblast, which has some ramifications. Just Absolutely. a few. The one that potentially has the biggest ramification, but also maybe a weak argument is for uh, Cultivation's influence on him. It made him worthy of Navani, uh, which is kind of a big deal because they have an incredibly good influence on one another. And True. And so because uh, this puts one... Navani had feelings for him yes, at a young age, that. though. She, so. But... She was There's more to it than she, just that. Yeah, but she also talked about how she was afraid of him, and that's why she mm-hmm. ultimately went with Gavilar. It was he was very mm-hmm. dangerous, but he's now at the point where he's a man who's reined in his passion. Mm-hmm. And I think like the reason Navani's were you know interested now is because one, she can actually approach him now. He's trapped. He's stuck on the shattered plains, and he can't wriggle out of it. <laughs> uh, but two, also because he's worthy of her now. And having gone mm-hmm. what she went through with Gavilar, she's not jumping in with just anyone. Mm-hmm. And he he probably felt like he could be her husband compared to just her pushing and pushing and him finally realizing, no, I I am okay to do that again. Yeah. Well, and this, ha- this has a lot of ramifications. One, uh, it puts them in a position that when Shallan shows up at the war camps, um, Dalinar and Navani can give her the tools that she needed to mm-hmm. end up discovering your theory. That's a we- it's a weaker gra- mm-hmm. you know link, but they uh, yeah, it could still be there. Yeah, it had, but it has an effect on it. Um, mm-hmm. But I I, w- I would say it's a weaker one. Um, another thing that's interesting is because Dalinar can't trust anyone at this point, he puts his trust into Bridge Four, which he bought, which he would not have done that with the shard blade in his previous version of himself because because they were the only group that really couldn't include a plant yeah yeah and so that has a couple of effects one kaladin starts getting some real training you know from from real people including one Mm -hmm. zile (laughs) which which well, and, and that brings in, you know, because we know that there's some connection or some knowledge of Zyle slash Vasher slash Nightblood, because that's one of the things that the Night Watcher offers to Dalinar when he comes mm-hmm. is, you know, do you want to uh, do you seek a sword that bleeds, that bleeds, bleeds black, black and can and never can... be defeated? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You so, know, so it's like so there's some knowledge of at least Nightblood, if not. Zyle, who and probably Zyle, because you know she would she would know she's this. keeping an eye on things. Yeah. yeah, this also puts Kaladin much closer to Adolin, which turns out to be a very important influence on his oh, yeah. life. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also turns out to be a great influence for Adolin, mm-hmm. like the whole thing where Adolin goes to prison with Kaladin. Yeah, mm-hmm. after just a oh, such a great scene. moment. Mm-hmm. Um. This also does one, one other thing because it makes sh- certain that Kaladin gets rewarded by Adolin for a certain suit of shard plate that Kaladin rejects, and that suit goes to who? Oh, Nobody. Gosh. We don't speak his name. Oh, we're gonna be speaking his name a lot. Don't you worry. <laughs> she. This is going through her effect on Moash is actually one of the shocking things I discovered going through this mm-hmm. and being like, I never thought mm-hmm. of this, but it puts yeah. it puts Moash because. They're now being the bodyguards of the king. It puts Moash very close to the king. Uh-huh. Um, it also puts Dalinar in position to refound the Knights Radiant, which mm-hmm. leads to the entire scene at the uh, at the Battle of Thalen Fields eventually. Uh, when, and when he swears the third ideal of the uh, the uh, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting the bondsmiths. I kept I kept saying Oathbringers. Um, <laughs> 
you know, so first of all, he would have fallen at that moment, if not for Cultivation's influence of preparing mm. him for this moment. And that's one of the most direct things that she's done, because she intentionally took the memories and gave them back to him piecemeal in a way that he could process them. And then like because when she gave it back, to, all of them back to him, he broke. Yeah. But then he healed stronger. Well, because that because, was because, yeah, he'd. He'd been given time to work up to it, even mm-hmm. though it broke him right then. He was able like, to fix it. Because it destroyed him yeah. well, when, oh, when he first found yeah. out. That was Odium's he, entire plan. But, but that, that was exactly that was Odium's plan was he was going to give him back to him. Um, and so she gave it back so that he would have time to heal and again, heal back stronger mm-hmm. before Odium could do that. So Odium was just like, hey, check it out. And he's just like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and on top of it, it was all like when you when she has her meeting with Dalinar, the thing she says is that this is a she basically says this is a risk I'm taking because this could hand him, uh, you know, uh, an amazing weapon. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. but it's, uh, you know, I cultivate, uh, you know, anything. And that includes the thorns, which is just such a cool line. I like that. Um. So it pre- uh, preps him so that he can actually withstand Odium. And it freaks Odium out. It, we still don't know the significance of it, but he says, no, we killed you. I still say it was autonomy. Could be autonomy. Could Well, because the other thing is, like, we, who's the we? Is it we killed Honor? Or is it we killed Adenalsium and there's something even deeper going on? No, I think it was we killed Honor. Yeah. But but we do know that he had help in killing Honor in some way. We mm-hmm. ke- we also mm-hmm. clearly know he had help in killing Adenalsium. So it's it's probably one of those two. Unless somehow Odium has killed someone else that he would be shocked by coming back. But which we don't know. I mean, no. It's... Or race, I should say. We got to be specific nowadays. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh so this is obviously uh, jumping back and forth a bit. Um, because So because Dalinar swears that third ideal, he's able to save uh, Shalon, Kaladin, and Adolin on the other side of Shadesmar, mm-hmm. um, which leads to some other awesome scenes in there, which also leads to capturing the Thrill, mm-hmm. which also, uh, also leads to Venli swearing her first ideal, because I don't think she swears it without... Uh, seeing how that entire battle went mm. down. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so, and not only that, that, you know, that whole scene, that was the first time where we had a member of each order on the field. Yeah. Yeah. One, it, it also leads to, uh, to in a fact, moment, we had a moment each, of clarity from Tom. In fact, if I'm remembering right, we had each of the, uh, of the flashback characters, on the same field at that moment. Uh, that we've had up to that point, yeah. No, yeah. all all of the yeah. flashback trying to characters think. that we. I'm trying to think, yeah, because. Because in Ash. on the back five, on the back five, it's Lift, Yesna, Ash, Renar, and and Tom. Oh, Lift is one of them. Okay, I forgot about Lift. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, Lift yeah. Lift will probably be book six, I think, is what is expected. But of course, that can change. So far okay. All right. Um, it's just six years. Yeah. <laughs> Only that, six. <laughs> no, not six, because there will be a gap between five and six. So. Yeah, it's going to be a bit. It'll be a while. Oh, man. Um, oh. Obviously, Dalinar unites the kingdoms, all that stuff. We already covered with Lyft. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing, Dalinar and Navani grow to help one another, which puts uh, Navani in a much better position to do artifabry and shenanigans. Which mm-hmm. is what catches the ire of the sibling. Um, yeah. They also gain trust with Le- this one could be a stretch, but this whole thing leads to gaining the trust of Queen Fen and the relationship with the Thalen Nation and Althkar improves. Which, when it comes time to go try to find Akina, that means they're in a place to actually deal with Rissen, mm-hmm. and all the events of Dawn Shard happen. Yeah. I don't know if that happens, you know, without all this. They definitely mm. don't have Windrunners going with them. Yeah. And if they don't do that, they don't discover the 
the directional uh, Fabrials, because that gets uh, discovered by... Uh, oh, I'm forgetting. The other Hadazian. What's his name? Oh, oh, oh so Huyo. Huyo, that's it. Huyo. Huyo. So, and then, you know, Don Shards. Um, <laughs> so, who knows if that was an intentional part of the plan. That's probably a weaker connection, but... Yeah. Should be considered. Uh, so, anyway, Navani Dalinar, they grow closer, they get married, blah, blah, blah. And Nivon- it sounds like you're basically saying the plots of all of these books have happened basically <laughs> because of cultivation. Kind of. Uh, the big parts, yeah. Yeah. Well, so then, so Navani, Dalinar, they grow together. And Navani grows enough as a leader that uh, Dalinar trusts her to run your Ethereum. Which she's obviously always been capable of running your Ethereum. I don't know if Dalinar would have before all this trusted her to hold the most important fortification that in the entire war. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Which obviously leads to everything in uh, into rhythm of war. war. But the mm-hmm. the important ones being uh, she she and Raboniel talk to each other. She discovers. The combinations of light, anti-light, and, you know, Mm -hmm. Bond's the sibling. Yeah. And becomes the other (laughs) Bond smith. And at the same time, Dalinar's a better man, which makes him a better leader, which maybe puts him in a position to where he understands Kaladin. He puts him on on the bench, Mm -hmm. which Kaladin needed to be on the bench in order for Kaladin to be there at Irithiru. Because if he hadn't, Kaladin definitely would have been with Dalinar on the front lines. Mm Mm-hmm. And Kaladin probably doesn't swear the fourth ideal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely doesn't. Uh, and, and, oh, and then it also prevents him from becoming Odium's champion because Kaladin was clearly backup plan. So that was kind of important. Right. But this, the the biggest one though, is his relationship with Teravangian, mm. because Teravangian is, and we'll get more into him. But they needed Seth to be in the same place as Teravangian to where Teravangian would try to manipulate Seth. Because Seth has night blood. Mm-hmm. And again, we know that there was some sort of potential access to night blood that the Night Watcher had. I, I personally think Zeth having night blood is also part of well, so, Cultivation's machinations. So we're actually going to get to that because... Uh, but the, the last couple bits that I think are interesting with Dalinar before we go to Teravangian, because that's we're going straight to what you just said. Um, one, Dalinar visits Ashar. Uh, visiting Ashar makes Odium think that Dalinar has been conversing with Ashar and learning about Bondsmith stuff, mm-hmm. which pisses Odium off and puts him in a position to make a bad deal. And he is really angry which becomes important later um because at this point odium is in a blind range because he didn't get dalinar as his champion he lost at thalen field he lost at irithiru he's been forced into this crappy deal he is not a happy uh shard mm-hmm. so let's go back to teravangian and, and roll back and look at teravangian's effects on things Teravangian asks for the intelligence to to do stuff and the the compassion to know what it should be or something like that. I forget the exact wording of his wish. The capacity. Capacity. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, so he has his his day of transcendent intelligence. He founds the diagram. That has a few effects, but the one that I didn't before I started compiling all this that I didn't think about this was, uh, he hi- the diagram hires Seth to kill all the high princes in Yaakoved to give Teravangian control of it and gives Seth orders to kill Dalinar. But someone else joins the diagram and his name is Graves. Mm-hmm. If you forgot Graves, you could be forgiven because that's all the way back in uh, Words of Radiance at this point. Um, yeah. Graves, uh, he understands the diagram differently and he feels the diagram doesn't say kill Dalinar, it's we need to ally with him. We need to recruit uh, him. And we need and so mm-hmm. his whole plan is we're gonna kill Elokar to elevate Dalinar to High Prince, to force him mm-hmm. to be the tyrant he needs to be for our plans to succeed. And to do that, 
he uh he recruits Moash. <laughs> Moash's entire path starts here. Mm -hmm. Without this, Moash doesn't doesn't really get a chance to really try and kill Elakar, which mm -hmm. uh, this entirely leads to uh, Kaladin swearing the third the third ideal and becoming a full night radiant. Uh, mm -hmm. When he swears it in front of Graves and Moash, Graves freaks out. And uh, I have this quote written down, and he yells, Too late. The diagram spoke of this. We missed it. We missed it completely. We focused on making certain you were separated from Dalinar and not what our actions might push you to become. I'd forgotten about that. Me too. I completely, I completely forgot oh, about man. all this. So Kaladin's whole moment of crisis, swearing the third ideal and becoming a Night Radiant, is because of the diagram's influence. Hmm. Now, might he have found a way to do it before? He might have. He might have found a way. But he, it was really important he swear it then, because Kaladin then immediately, as they run away, like, because they're like, yeah, we, we don't want none of this. Yeah. <laughs> he immediately flies to the Shattered Plain, saves Dalinar from getting killed by Zeth, and has mm -hmm. just one of the most epic fights ever with Zeth, <laughs> and kills Zeth. Zeth, willing to follow his, his code or, of... Or, uh, or leads Zeth to die, depending on which version of the book you read, yeah. because... Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he, he was mostly dead. Uh, and then he gets his soul stapled at the last <laughs> second. But it was... Zeth's willingness to stick to his code of honor, despite everything he knew, that caught the attention of Nail. Mm -hmm. And Nail staples his soul back together, makes him a skybreaker, and gives him night blood. Mm. Which is a kind of an important chess piece. Yeah. All of that is because the is kind of the diagram's fault. Wait, that's night blood? I thought it was sword to me. So yes, sword. I'm it is sorry, sword. <laughs> um, so yeah, then Moash travels with Graves. Uh, they get attacked by Leshwi, which sets Moash uh, on the path to eventually kill Elokar. Uh, his whole meeting with Leshwi would have wouldn't have happened without that. Uh, mm -hmm. which sends Kaladin into his existential crisis of that book. Um, and it causes. Kolinar, like, they had a chance of rescuing Kolinar, maybe. Uh, but mm -hmm. the city gets turned over to the singers. And the other thing that we didn't really think about at the time, it frees up a spren for wit. As horrible as Elokar's death is, that's the spren wit ends up bonding. Mm -hmm. yeah, now, I, I don't, don't see that being something that, that she intended, though. No. Probably not. because no, she, doesn't, she doesn't like wit. Yeah. She doesn't like wit at all. He calls her slammer. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's a term of affection. I'm sure she loves it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but the point is, it is an, a, at least an unintended consequence of her. But I don't think it's part mm. of her plan. I do agree with that. Um, but it is an interesting, you know, turn of events. This mm -hmm. leads to Moash being given the Racian Blade that kills Jezrian. And mm. the death of Jezrian is what puts Ash and Talm... Uh, to, they get discovered by Yesna, which yeah. puts them in a position to to give more knowledge to Dalinar's crew about the about the heralds and their knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't know if that was fully a part of her plan. That might be a bit of a stretch, but it's at least a possibility that she saw that. Mm -hmm. It's at least a possibility. Um, this also leads Moash. He goes to uh, Hearthstone, kills Rashon which causes Kaladin to fray a bit more, which might be what sends Kaladin into over the edge of what Dalinar's like, yeah, no, we gotta, you need to retire. Which is yeah. why he's at, still in your theory when yeah. the attack happens. Now, I yeah. think I think you could say Dalinar might have done that anyway. He was already seeing the signs. Possible, mm -hmm. but yeah. that definitely, I think, that at least put the nail in the coffin on that one. This mm -hmm. also leads to Moash being there when it's time to kill Navani, and yeah. does the sibling feel desperate enough to bond Navani if Moash isn't there? Like maybe the sibling was desperate enough for themselves to die. They they would have let that happen. 
But right. would they have done it if it was they both needed each other? I don't know. Yeah. But there's at least yeah. again, it's one of those. There's at least a chance. And if there's anyone, I would think uh, cultivation could read well. You'd think it'd be their own child. Indeed. You would hope so, but sometimes kids surprise you. It's true. Um, so that's everything that Moash, that's just Moash, that part of the equation that I had completely forgotten. Yet Moash was technically part of the diagram for a little bit. Oh, yeah. 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 Just that part of his life, it's like, oh, yeah, that was. Oh, that, yeah, that happened. Yeah. So was Danlin. Yeah. I still <laughs> find that amusing that she was part of the diagram. I don't know why. Um, so that, but we also have, what else did the diagram do? Well, they betrayed, uh, the coalition at the Oath Gate, um, mm -hmm. which prevented reinforcements for coming to Thalen Field. This forces Tef to speak the third ideal. Mm -hmm. Um, he yeah. probably wouldn't have done it if it wasn't so desperate. And it also puts mm -hmm. Tef in a position to help Kaladin at the Battle of Urethiru. Yeah. Uh, the Battle of Thalen Field, it, par it partially unfolds the way it does because they don't have reinforcements. A and mm. when the reinforcements comes, matter. So here are the following events that might have happened in a different order or not at all had the reinforcements just been there from the start. Uh, one, does Dalinar swear the third ideal for reinforcements just immediately come to help? I think probably, but maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. Uh, does Seth decide to step in and help if he sees reinforcements are coming? Or does he content himself to stay on the sidelines? Don't know. Does the thrill get captured? Don't know. Does Rock kill Amaram if the reinforcements come immediately? That's a big one. Yeah, because that leads to Rock. Because, I mean, if, if, if there's more reinforcements, it's very likely that somebody else would have gotten Amaram or Amaram wouldn't have... Yeah. Up like he did. yeah, it's big. It's big enough that, you know, there's a good chance the next Stormlight novella will show the repercussions of that. Yeah, because yeah. Brandon was trying to decide between Rock and the, Rissen, the, yeah. the Rissen story or Rock's story. And, well, we know that there's stuff we, we want to know what's going on with Rock, what happened, what, mm -hmm. you know, because he, he, he just yeah. sort of up and vanished. Cool. Yeah. All right. So if Dalinar doesn't swear the third ideal, Tom probably doesn't have his moment of lucidity, which turned mm -hmm. out to be important because it, because of, of the effect on Ash. Indeed. Um, and mm -hmm. and then on top of that, does Venley swear the first ideal if reinforcements come early and they just make a tactical retreat? Probably. I don't know. I don't know. Right. We don't know. Uh. But anyway, with the other stuff with the diagram, Teravangian, then he gives partial truths to Dalinar as a as a hedge, which leads to uh, Odium's loss at Thalen Field. Go means he go reaches out to Teravangian to to co-opt the diagram. And in that mm -hmm. vision. Teravangian gets even though he's stupid, gets one bit of key info that Odium can't see Renarin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Without that vision, he does not get that that key little detail. So that turned out to be important. Then in the next book, because Odium views Teravangian now as a liability, he has him betray it. And which leads to Teravangian getting caught. But because Dalinar and Teravangian have become friends of a sort, um, at the very minimum, they at least understand each other's problems, if, even if they don't agree. Uh, mm -hmm. that means he takes him prisoner. Him being taken prisoner, Renarin has a vision which causes him to talk to Teravangian. This is, I forgot about this in Rhythm of War. Right. Uh, he goes mm -hmm. to talk to him, uh, which puts Renarin in proximity to Dalinar, Zeth, and Teravangian, and Nightblood, all four of them, making all four of them difficult for Odium to see. Right. Mm. Which then he goes to Odium in another vision. That's when Teravangian starts to realize Odium is vulnerable. Ja Anat uh, confirms that as well. That the mm -hmm. vessel, I should say, is uh, is vulnerable. That race is yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Teravangian then plots to try and use Zeth and be like, if I can maneuver Zeth to be close, he could technically kill Odium. 
but the problem is Teravangian has used Seth before and Seth does hates not him. like that. Trust yeah. mistrust him completely. <laughs> but mm-hmm. that turns out that's all part of the plan cuz uh, on an important night Zeth shows up to kill Teravangian. Uh mm-hmm. at the same time that's uh that's the I think it's the same day it might have been a day before that Renarin shows up says I'm sorry gives Teravangian the crystals with the corrupted windsprend in them. Right. This is also the day, because everything's lining up on this day, that Teravangian's having his day of transcendent emotion. Like, he's so Connection. emotional that he cried over, like, how delicious bread was. Like, it was... He was all emotion that day. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's stupid that day. Zeth comes, he can't talk his way out of it, and Zeth is like, what are these crystals? Stupid crystals! <laughs> Throws them, breaks them, Corrupted windsprint come out, and who shows up but one pissed off Odium who has just had loss after loss after loss, <laughs> and the vessel is very weak because at that point the shard is almost all the influence. Mm-hmm. Zeth kills Teravangian at the same point that he's being pulled into the cognitive realm by Odium. Nightblood's there, boob. Teravangian is the perfect vessel because he's all emotion and he becomes Odium. Oh, then Teravangian mm-hmm. messes with Hoyd's me- memories somehow as Odium. Yeah. I don't think, right. again, I don't think that's part of the plan, but anyway. Every single one of these dominoes <laughs> potentially seen, <laughs> predicted, and done because of cultivation. But now the big question. Why? Hmm. Yeah, and this this really is the the, the million dollar question. What does she want? Yeah, like, because what, what what do we know about her? We know that she was romantically involved with um, Tanavast, who mm-hmm. was killed by race. Yeah. Um, at the we same, we know t- that she. At the same time, I I don't I don't know if, I I doubt this is a revenge thing. I no, there's more to it than rev- I, yeah. I I think that. You know, revenge is a nice little bonus for her, but you know, but I don't mm-hmm. think this is just a, a vengeance plot, um, because you know now she seems to be like, okay, now things really get started. You know, she's ramping. She, you know, she's not winding down her plots when when she speaks with Tara Vangian. She's ramping up. Mm. Yeah. Um. So I think a good question here would be, what is her intent? We've never gotten a full explanation of her intent the way we did for, say preservation or ruin or or even mm-hmm. honor at this point um right it seems her intent is something to the effect of she wants to help things grow but she accepts that they might not grow as the way she desires which fits the name cultivation mm-hmm. uh odium accuses her of just being someone who just wants to see change for change's sake but odium obviously is an unreliable narrator in that regard which would almost put her as a different sort of opposite for ruin. Yeah. Because both of you them know, are change, but one is in one know, direction, it, the other's the other. With, with, with me thinking about the word cultivation, usually when you're cultivating something, you do have an end goal in sight, though. It's mm-hmm. not just that you think you, you accept that things might not grow as you want, but you're also accepted to trim off and clip and get rid of those things that don't go how you want to. So... Yeah. Well, and if, yeah. what did she, what did she say when uh, Dalinar? What did she call it when Dalinar came? A pruning. Yeah, is what mm. she said. Yeah, so she's she's very. I can definitely see her not having issues with. Well, you're going to become a problem, so I'm just going to make sure you go away and mm-hmm. you're dealt with and other things. So I I don't see her just going. Well, I'm just going to start you and just let you go. She's she's going to keep guiding things. If you're truly cultivating it, you're maybe she just wants process. everything to reach its potential. And she saw Tara <laughs> Vandy and she said, well, there's only one end for this guy. There you go. So. <laughs> but so that's so clearly part of her goal was replacing race as the vessel mm-hmm. of odium. And mm-hmm. she ta- I, I can't remember the exact line, but she says something to the effect of, you know, I was preparing you for this so mm-hmm. that you would be able to bear mm-hmm. this with honor. Small H again. It's an important distinction on this planet. Um, Very much, particularly coming from her. Yeah, mm. but she wants she wants him to bear this with honor, and that that it is a it is something you have to bear. Um, 
Because if you're the vessel of odium, of of God's mm. divine hatred and passions, like there, the, the, that's the thing he said. He's like he is these things. Like we mm -hmm. we learned that odium wasn't fully lined. It's just odium's also not reliable. It's like yeah, you may mm. be these things, but you are his hatred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe Teravangian is the best person to uh, to do that. But at the same time, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm really worried. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I, the, I am. This might just be the idealist in me and the the hopeful. I don't think she's she's ramping up to be the big bad. I think she's ramping up to be a benevolent ally. Yeah, I but, I don't I don't get a malicious feeling from her. But she's a dragon. Dragons, you can never yeah. think that you fully understand them. <laughs> yeah. Because they're dragons. Well, and then on top of it, she's one that's been molded by a power for millennia. Um, mm -hmm. What's the line and, from, uh, from I think it's, was it Hoyd's letter to Frost? Where he said, uh, something to the effect of, eight, you, you know, A.T. was a kind man and you saw what it did to him. Race right. was never yeah. a kind man. Uh, well, and plus, she's a dragon. Who knows what kind of Moral you know weird have, yeah. mix that that ends up being? Yeah. So because we, we don't know a lot about about Yolan, Yolish dragons. Nope. Mm -hmm. Well, and then on top of it, we don't know. Like, I, I'm I'm with uh, Amy here. I don't think replacing uh, o Odium Odium's vessel was her only goal. Like like you said, she uh, you don't you have an end in mind. And mm -hmm. this seems yeah. like it's just a strength thing to say, to be like changing who holds the power of one sixteenth of a god is just the start of a plan. It's uh, just a step. <laughs> yeah. Like most D&D &D campaigns, that's the end. That's the fin the, f the final thing. You, you Someone became yeah. a god. Um, mm -hmm. But for her, it, it might just be a start. But what would her goal even be? If, th if that's not it. Maybe she wants to restore Adonosium, wants yeah, to that, cultivate. That's, the, that's and, the big. You know, if we're talking about bringing everything to its thing. full potential, maybe that's what her desire is. Of course, she was part of a group that thought it was necessary to shatter Destroy Adonosium it, in the so. first place. So who knows what this dragon lady's thinking? Yeah, well, yeah. It's it's. There's too many unknowns to really pin down exactly what yeah. she's doing, and I'm sure that's intentional that we don't have enough information to yeah. make that. That guess. Well, so then here's another fun question. One, she obviously she she knew that Teravangian could accomplish this if given the right prunings at the right spot. Mm -hmm. Do you think she fully appreciates how dangerous Teravangian is? I think she does. Oh yeah, I'm sure she's pretty good at the big picture. Like it's one of, because again, what Teravangian saw, mm. you know, he he's mm. just like I. You know what I thought was <laughs> godlike was piddling. Yeah. The question you know, I, is, I, I, I think she fully appreciates how dangerous he could be, but I think she's much mm -hmm. more dangerous. Yeah. Do, I, I just, I wonder if she thinks. I, I'm worried that she thinks that uh, Teravangian, being who she cultivated, that he might be easy, easier to work with. Like, and she wants to work with him. And I think she mm. might, I think there is a chance just because one of the thing he says about the future site is that it lets you see, you know, what, what they might do, but it doesn't let you see the hearts of the men who do it. I right. worry she doesn't fully understand how broad he can view things and how wide is it. I, I keep coming back to it. What's the, What's that? The first line we get from of the diagram, you need to rule everything. Hmm. And so that's yeah. my one worry. My one worry is that one blind spot that Tara Vangian talks about is the thing that she'll uh, she might come to regret is not I'm understanding. Not sold on that. I, you, you've you've got a there's a there's a potential point there. Yeah, I'm not sold yet. Yeah, well, I mean anyone if anyone's sold on anything at this point it should be that you don't know as much as i mean 
if I could always bring it in secret, the sport's secret history. It's a, the the weakness of all clever men. They're not as smart as they think they are. Mm-hmm. And there's so little we know that we should all be very cognizant of how little we know. Yeah. Perhaps. But it's been we've been given a taste of her entire plan, and now we've always wondered what she up to, and then he became odium, and it's like. Oh, uh, uh, I definitely did, wasn't thinking big enough. No. Hmm. Do you think they'll work together? That's another question I have. Like that they'll I actually think so. work together. I yes. could, I could see that more. Yeah. At least for a time. Who knows how long? But do you think she's mm-hmm. on board with whatever machinations he's coming up with already? I, I can see her letting him think she is, but I don't know if she'd fully commit. But then again. We don't know enough about her. Yeah. The one thing do we it, do but... know is she's a shard, and the shards are very much guided by their intent at this point. They've had it for a very long mm-hmm. time. And unless you're someone like Harmony, who is so, both both cursed and blessed to have two shards that pull in such opposite directions that it seems he's been able to keep himself, but at the cost of not being able to be as effective because they he's pull in such opposite directions... Mm -hmm. Um, who knows how much she's lost. And if she is someone who just sort of is not, not to the point of original odium saying she just wants change for change sake. But if she is someone who is trying to help things grow for just their sake, who knows Mm -hmm. how little she might care about his machinations because Mm -hmm. that's, she's on such a grand scale that the, the smallness of it might not, matter too much to her Mm -hmm. yeah it's the problem of of being in charge of such a large thing is you start to lose sight of the the individuals but the one advantage that he had uh that teravangian has over her right now is that he is so freshly human that Mm. he he understands these things probably a lot better than she does at the moment yeah because he's just not, he's not that far removed from it. He hasn't been influenced by his um, shard as much. Yeah. Right. That's the one advantage he, I think, like, if it was a game of wits between the two of them, I think that's the one advantage he has. Mm. But yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see if there was a, uh, like, what sort of correspondence there's been between her and Harmony. Because Harmony sort of reached out to a bunch of different shards. Yeah. yeah. I would love to see her response to Harmony's existence. Mm. It's it's important because, like, we had, because uh, we saw Endowment's response, and Endowment was just like, yeah, we were all supposed to separate anyway, so... No, I don't give a crap. <laughs> like, Here's the other thing. Harmony is the first instance of uh, somebody else picking up the shards. Yeah, I mean, two of them, yeah. Kelsier and then Vin and then Harmony. Mm-hmm. But this is the first time where, where a shard has been killed and somebody else has picked it up. This yep. happens 300 years before Stormlight. I wonder if that sort of inspired her and said, okay, hmm. you know, it's not just a matter of destroying a vessel, but a mortal can pick it up. So, you know, maybe she's just like, what can we do with this? I mean, I think who, we'd be who foolish. Can we put in that spot? Yeah. I think we'd be foolish to think it had no effect. Mm-hmm. At the very minimum, yeah. even if that wasn't what inspired her to do all like how to do these things. Uh-huh. It could very well be the genesis of her sort of being like, okay, we're going to have to be a little more direct here. Cause things are, things are getting dangerous pretty quick. They're not improving. Yeah. This is, this is when she decides that she's Thanos puts her hand in yeah. the infinity gauntlet and says, I'll do it Dude, myself. You know? <laughs> uh, I don't think dragons have that weird chin thing going on, but we don't know, I suppose. You don't know. I don't. You're right. I, I don't. No. It'd be, it'd be fun, though. Dragons have to be prettier than that. 
Indeed. But no, there's a... She's played an incredible game so far. Like, I just remember thinking at the end of the original trilogy of Mistborn, just the, the chess match between preservation of ruin was an incredible thing since preservation had to play it from beyond the grave because all mm. he he sacrificed his mind to accomplish it so he sort of had to trust that the board that as he said it at that point was going to be enough to push it forward and i thought yeah. that was impressive and then we see what she's like, been oh, up to she's like oh no they're not playing chess <laughs> compared to her they're playing Candyland. yeah you know <laughs> Or she's playing Mahjong or Go or one of those other even yeah. more complicated games. Like he stacked the, you know, he stacked the deck at the beginning, but she's sitting here just like <laughs> playing six different games you know, at mm. once. Well, and it makes you wonder because just the concept of cultivation as a just an abstract concept, it does make sense that the holder of cultivation would be someone who has a lot of, you know, good future side ability. Mm-hmm. And it makes you wonder mm-hmm. if there are. And it also makes sense why preservation's better at it than ruin. Um, just in that regard. Because one's trying to keep things at a certain state. The other one is trying to change it, which means you are influencing it, which means more possibilities. Um, but hers, because hers is an agent of change, but it is looking forward. It makes sense that she might be the best out of all of them. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know how what that says about ambition, because I would think they would have been the best, but they're one of the first to go, but maybe that's why they're yeah. one of the first to go. Mm. Who knows? Indeed. There's, it's just, uh, Brandon, you magnificent, magnificent. Man. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I, I, I never would have expected I'd be into a plot like this just from my history with reading. Oh, and it's so fun. We're just mm. like shoulder deep in it now. Drowning. And it's only going to get better as we get more words of uh, words of Brandon. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Okay, I like what di- di- uh, Disgraphic Programmer says in chat. Preservation had to write down all his chess moves before the game started, but he can see the future. Ruin can't see it as far, but he gets to play live. <laughs> well spoken. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to see where it goes. We Me only too. have to wait yeah. like what another three, four years before we get another one. Three years. Three years, yeah, because he's going to start. Um, he's finishing up Star Sight number, or Skyward number three. Skyward three, and, and then, then he's uh, going to start Wax and Wayne, and Wayne four. Which is going to ha- probably have some interesting things with all the Trell stuff. There's a reason why he's releasing it at this point. Like, he's timing yeah. these very specifically. So I think mm-hmm. there's some, you know, hey, maybe we get a, mm-hmm. an appearance by, you know, or just a, a communication from a certain dragon. You know? <laughs> That'd be cool. We'll just, just he's releasing these in a certain order, and so it's just like the, there are things mm-hmm. revealed in each book when he wants them to be. Yeah. Well, especially since uh, I think it was like three years ago when he had his big word or not word of Brandon, uh, State of the Sanderson, where he sort of mm-hmm. relayed out the order of things that he. Planned. I think that was just. I think that was just 2019. Was it? Okay. Well, uh-huh. 2020, I think, oh, counted goodness. for at least I two think. years. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but it, uh, ever since it, he's, I think he sort of had a, a moment where he's like, I re like as much as a good planner as Brandon is, I think he sat down and said, I really need to buckle down and get this plotted out. Cause mm-hmm. much like we're impressed by cultivation, planning things out over millennia, Brandon's actually having to plan things out over the rest of his life. To make sure he gets all the books he wants out, out. Yeah. Yep. Which I'm glad I don't have that type of pressure. I mean, to be fair, he took it upon himself. Yes. Mm. It is at least, he's at least indirectly culpable. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway. So, uh, if you guys liked this, uh, this little conversation we had, I thought it was a pretty good one. What do you guys think? (laughs) Pretty good? (laughs) Well, maybe it's you should good. become a patron. As we said, this is uh, this is the start of season four. We've been doing this for three years. Our Patreon's over at patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. And uh, if you've been listening for three years and you're like, I like these people. I think, uh, I think I'd like them to stick around. May I suggest you go over there? May I suggest you 
you know, donate maybe a dollar or if you're feeling thematic, 16 a month. I'm just going to throw that out there in case <laughs> someone wants to be thematic. Just no pressure. Just saying it would be thematic. Jordan um, is always ready to shill. Oh, I am just down for shilling. It's great. Um, but if we can't get you to do that, may I instead direct you to uh, maybe give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. We're not too particular on where it is. It uh, definitely definitely get it. it does help us get new listeners. Um, and I'm just going to throw a challenge out there. I would like someone to write a review using the word touchdown somewhere in the middle of it. I just, it's a little writing prompt, and I just want to see what happens. Um, Don't just throw it in. Make it actually yeah, work. Yeah, no, it, it has to flow. The... If you just say touchdown at the end of it, I'm just going to be like, okay, yes. And, you know, Stan yeah. Lee said if Excelsior. Re- and if your review just says touchdown, that doesn't count. No. At the same time, I would love to see the person who's trying to check out our, our podcast. And there's just this one five-star review at the top that says touchdown. And they're just like, I- touchdown. What? what? I don't understand what this is. <laughs> they don't talk about football. What? This isn't useful at all. But no, see if you can seamlessly work it in. That's my writing. So, to prompt. be fair, you know, Mistborn has a homicidal hat trick. It is true. So. And I know Brandon regrets the line, but I still think that line is brilliant. <laughs> um, and if you're here, we thank you for being here right now. Uh, if you're not here right now, because you're there in the future. Might I suggest also twitch.tv slash uh, innkeeper's table on Monday nights at 830 Mountain Time. Every other well, Monday night. Every Sorry, yes. Every other Monday night. Uh, that's an important distinction. Uh, mm. You might want to just check us out live because in doing so, that's where you hear us uh, have our early or our pregame and postgame conversations, which really can go anywhere. Frankly, I think it's a ton of fun. I like being there, and uh, you should too. No? Okay. Uh, yeah. You can always follow us at Twitter in, and Instagram, at Cosmere Studies. We love it when you add and us. And Facebook. And We're Facebook. There, and Facebook. Uh, we especially love it when you share pictures of your pets. Uh, just... We're suckers for that. I might, I might, I might make like a, I've been tempted to figure out how to make like a GIF of me squeeing or something, and then we could like <laughs> reply with that because I'm totally game for that. If you want to figure out how to do that, Jordan, because that'd be cool. Uh, if someone's willing to go back and do an episode <laughs> and find her squeeing, just give me a timestamp. I can handle the rest. <laughs> I can make this work. Yes. That's. I, I mean, I know I already gave you guys a writing prompt earlier today, but apparently I'm throwing a scavenger <laughs> hunt on top of that. Don't we have an episode called like? In unintelligible squeeing noises or there, Probably. there is I something like do. that i will find it let's see i have that open that's important yeah we'll keep, give keep talking i'll, okay. I'll look okay involuntary squeezing noise. squeeing noises yes what that's squeeze. in, was that? not squeezing noises that's a different uh epi- episode 46 46 romance well, in the cosmere ah uh, anyway so i was like anyway. what are we talking about <laughs> and then you said that and I'm like, oh okay i now know what yes i know why mm-hmm. Um, our next episode, we're actually going to be covering. Uh, we we discussed it a little bit here, but uh, Harmony's letter to letter or letters to Hoyd. Were we talking about both of them or the one? Um, I think just sort of the whole conversation back and forth. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Then uh, we're going to be discussing that, and uh, we're going to be trying to do better with the uh, working emails into our podcast going forward. So if you have thoughts right now about that topic in particular, Hoyd and Harmony and the conversations therein. You should email us at Cosmere Studies at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any thoughts, concerns, theories, things you want to make sure we, we cover with that, send them there and we'll take a look at them. Just make sure they're concise emails and not, uh, you know, entire theses. Yeah, entire theses disguised as an email. We'll, we don't fall for that trick. We've, we've, we've seen that pitch before. We know how that play goes. Um, when uh, when we're not here discussing the Cosmere, we all have our own personal projects, and because we don't get to normally do so, we're going to start with Bill. Whoa! <laughs> What's going on? on What's it. going on? Yeah. No, so when I'm not here, I am... Uh, I, I've got another podcast um, with my buddy Dylan. We talk about board games, and it's called The Innkeeper's Table. If you're curious why this podcast is at twitch.tv slash innkeeper's table it's because of that the uh, my other podcast is called the innkeeper's table um we that's called talk about 
It is. <laughs> we talk about board games, um, really, really short episodes that are, are really aimed to introduce people who are kind of interested in board games, but they're not ready to dive in or, or they want to you know learn more about it. And so, for example, our most recent episode, we actually had two um, because I forgot to upload one a couple weeks ago. But so we uploaded two last week. One of them was called I Enjoyed Scrabble. Now, what do I play or something along those lines? And it, we go through discussing different options of games that you could play if you like Scrabble, but you want to you want to try something new. And then we also just last week we discussed co-op games. So games where rather than trying to beat each other, you and the other players are working together to beat the game, as it were. You know, a lot of the games have, quote, AIs programmed in using, you know, cardboard and plastic, which is kind of an interesting concept if you think about it. You've they tricked figured, paper they've, into they've, thinking. <laughs> indeed. Next are rock and scissors, and then the world just ends. And then I'm trying to, I can't remember what the next episode is. So, but it, you know, it's a surprise. So, you know, you'll want to check in on Friday and, and learn. I also do have board game reviews over at the innkeepers table at www.innkeeperstable.com. And you can follow us or follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at, at innkeepers table. All right, Amy. It's my turn. Okay. So my Facebook is coincidence, cosplay and props. My Twitter is at coincidence cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at coincidence underscore cosplay. And my websites, I have two. One of them, I need to actually figure out what I'm going to do with it, is my www.coincidencecosplay.com. And I have an Etsy shop. Please buy things. <laughs> um, it is etsy.com slash shop slash coincidence cosplay. I have dice up there. I'm planning on, I know I keep saying I'm planning on getting more stuff, and I really am. Like, I'm I'm contemplating doing, like, little dice that you could hang from your, your car. Um, rearview mirror, maybe, or... So it's just, um, it's just the, the normal just, uh, dashboard dice just, that know, people have, but now instead but of D6s, D20s. They're, they're D20s. <laughs> I, I'm going to see if I can do one. I, I don't know how soon I'm going to try it, but I'm, that's one of the things I want to try. I wanna, I'm want to. i thinking of maybe doing vinyl on canvas bags or something like that, because I have my silhouette cameo, and so I want to try and do more things like that. I'm actually, right now, I'm trying to do a shirt from Laura Olympus, which I'm not going to sell, because I don't want to get in trouble for copyright and stuff like that but i want to make it for me and the latest episode has a shirt that hades wears it says fetching sticks dog park and it's s-t-y-x instead of uh, a stick because mm. anyway it's really it's cute and i want to make that shirt and i just need to get my final to play nice with me so nice. yes that's that's one of the things and my last thing that i'm going to shill is my husband's website deckplan.io and they um just finished a new release they've they fix some bugs, but if you like Magic the Gathering and you want to, you know, share your deck or make new decks or see other suggested decks, then that's the place to go because it's cool. So go do that. They have free things. So there you go. All right. And then uh, if you if you liked this, if you said, hmm, how do we get more Jordan in our life? Uh, you're going to want to go to twitch.tv slash splice stream. Uh, recently, I did something that I've been working up to for for years at this point. Uh, I finally live on stream beat XCOM on its hardest difficulty with Iron Man turned on. <laughs> uh, if you don't know, XCOM is just it's it's one of the most difficult games you'll play. It'll it'll frustrate you out of nowhere and you'll be angry at how much you love it, despite how difficult it is. I finally did it live on stream this week. Um, I've been playing it pretty regularly on Fridays for quite a while, trying to do this. Um, it's opened up my Fridays for the first time in a long time. Because you don't understand, I had to beat this game. It was it was just a must. Um, so I've taken a short break, but come April, Friday mornings, when you're slacking off from work because the weekend's almost here, you're going to want to go to twitch.tv slash stream because I'm going to go back to a game that I know, A, know I can beat, but as a classic from a lot of our listeners childhoods, I'm going to be beating uh, and trying to 100% Banjo Kazooie on the original. <laughs> yes. There will be a lot of in the, in the entire stream and it's going to be wonderful. 
So just put that on your calendar, first Friday of April. I don't know what day that is. I'd be better at uh, preparing you. But, you know, I'm, I've told you all this information. I'll let you figure the out the second. date. The second. second. April okay. 2nd. April 2nd, we're going to be starting Banjo-Kazooie. If you're a fan of that game as I am, check it out. So with all that, uh, we've already discussed a lot about Corvelli Mavast. Let's instead, our final thoughts, let's discuss the fact that we have just started year four. Can you guys believe we've been doing this for three years? No. Oh, wow. It's so crazy. That, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. No. And, uh, the, other, the other really crazy thing is that we are $20 away from our next stretch goal of $96 on Patreon. That's, that's insane. I'm so glad that so many people like us that much. And well, thank you. And you know and what happens when we hit that stretch goal? We get merch. We start making merch. Yep. So, yeah. I'm not making it. We're going to have somebody else make it because I don't have that much time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> plus, plus, we just learned already that Vinyl doesn't like her or something, which is going to be a problem. I, we're working it out. I'm working it out with Vinyl. It was my first time. And unfortunately, with, with we're not. He transfer one. Unfortunately, okay. we're not going to call it Cosmerch because mm. that's, you know, dancing a little bit too close to, uh, to break. We'll probably Brandon's. call it Six Merch or something. We've already, we've already <laughs> danced with Brandon's uh, lawyers once, and it turns yeah. out they have two left feet. They stepped all over us. They're very nice. Yeah, they but said they sorry. Didn't Don't step break all rules. over us. They were actually very kind. <laughs> yeah, well, they said sorry. <laughs> no, it was anyway. actually the most, most kindly worded cease and desist you'll ever see. Indeed. No. And, and uh, that was years ago. So yeah, yeah. yeah at this Year point, one. isn't that weird that that was years ago at this point? Oh my goodness, what? Oh, crazy! It was so much easier back then. We just had to review mm. Brandon's <laughs> books, and then we ran out of them. <laughs> oh boy! All right. Um, we uh, we can be followed over on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under Cosmic Studies. Uh, as we said before, our next episode, we're going to be covering the letters, the, the discourse between Harmony and Hoyd. So again, if you have any uh, questions, theories, or something you'd like to touch on, be sure to email us at CosmereStudies at gmail.com. And while you obviously can always find us over at YouTube, uh, I am putting out the challenge that uh, you should come check us out live. Uh, next time we're going to be live is going to be March 29th, 2021 at 7.30 Pacific, 10.30 Eastern Time. Uh, but if you can't catch us live or if you prefer the audio version, you can always listen to us over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever podcasts are found. I almost said sold there. That wouldn't have made much sense. Uh, <laughs> but you really should come see us live. That's going to be the most fun. Because, uh, again, March 29th, we're going to be talking about Hoyd and Harmony having their little aim chat sessions. And last time they, uh, <laughs> you know, chatted, they dropped a lot of juicy shard names that we didn't have before. Mm. Was it uh, four of them? There were four. four. Yeah, four new ones. So we might have a thing or two to cover. But anyway, until, uh, until March 29th, on behalf of Amy, Bill, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember... There's always, There's always, always another, another secret. secret.